Brand, the, the success of the actor strike, at least on the actor side, you know, one of the things to me that became really evident happened last week when Netflix put out its viewership numbers, the number of hours that certain shows had. And when you see that the number one show had something like 800 million hours viewed, to me that's, that's pretty stunning. Why was that important, that transparency? And, and how did you wrestle that out of these studios? Well, you know, we have a right to know how successful the projects that we're a major contributor in are. Otherwise, how do you val how do you negotiate your value? So that's one thing. It was imperative that they be more transparent. You know, this whole new platform was trying at every corner to be as, um, I, I guess the secretive. word is, is greedy, secretive, but also not thoughtful of uh, the people that were really partners in the building of this platform. And that's what ultimately they had to be reminded of. Uh, we're not peons, we're partners. And it's really important that we know uh, what our participation is. And by trying to keep it secret, wasn't working for us anymore, amongst many other things that had to be corrected. Unfortunately, as Frederick Douglass said, a great American, that power concedes nothing without demand. It never has and it never will. So their first instinct over and over again was to do something that was not in the best interest of anybody but themselves. And then they had to be reminded that they're not the only people well, in the room. That's interesting that uses the term reminded. That's a rather gentle term. But uh, let's just explain to people. In the past, when they bought a show, they got a flat fee. I mean, let's use Squid Game, for example. Who knew that that was going to be as huge as it was? I get the flat fee initially up front. But then when it became the most watched show, that's worth something, is it not, for the actors, for the writers, and therefore the whole crying, we're poor, we can't do it, we're a, we're a, a new sort of, it's, we're in our incipient stages of, of streaming, it, it kind of fell flat, did it not? Well, I, I'm not sure if Squid Games is actually um, something that the platform makes specifically for themselves. I think it was something that they bought. Mm -hmm. uh, so in that regard, it may not exactly Oh, you're talking, okay, original however, entertainment, yeah. Yeah. Um, however, it was very important that we get some kind of a new participation, that a new stream of revenue be opened up, and we got it. So um, this is all... You know, of course, uh, if a show is wildly successful, mm -hmm. everybody up and down the ladder in the old business model, which was linear television, benefited. And that's the other thing that for some reason didn't occur to them that, yeah. uh, you know, we were in a vacuum sealed box. You, there was no tail of revenue sure. upon which the old contract of residual model was based. Can I ask you what your relationship is with the, the network chiefs now uh, uh, and the, the studio chiefs? I'm talking about Bob Iger, David Zaslov. There was a little bit of scorched earth initially. Uh, then it was, well, we hope both sides can, can get together. But how is it now? And what do you hope for? Because the next, the next contract is in fewer than three years, correct? Yes, that's true. And I think that, you know, it's we've changed the culture and, uh, you know, all the old playbook uh, acts of intimidation didn't work. And so it was imperative that they lean in, that they hear, and to their credit, they ultimately did. Right. I've heard from uh, Bob Iger and uh, I was actually not feeling well last week, so you know, we're, we'll catch up. And, uh, and actually, I had gotten an email from one of them uh, who wrote me that 
you know, it was a tough go. I'm glad it's over. Mm. Uh, you were the maestro, and you won. Congratulations. Wow. That's and nice. I thought that was very generous yeah. as well. Yeah. And, you know, I don't want to say who it was because it was a personal email that was sent to me. But, uh, you know, there was no question that uh, the energy of this negotiation and what we triggered on the global stage mm -hmm. in terms of a workers' movement um, was larger than the sum of yeah, its parts. Friend, friend, it's Charlie Gasparino here. You, um, you're dealing with a business that is in massive transition right now. Uh, it kind of reminds me, not quite of the auto industry now, Reminds me a little bit of the auto industry pre-2008. I mean, this is an industry that when you have to renegotiate your contract, it's going to be vastly different, different revenue streams. It's going to downsize. And I'm saying at some point, aren't you squeezing, trying to squeeze water from a stone? And here's why. If Sherry Redstone can't sell Paramount, and that's essentially what she's doing with her 80% stake in national amusements, for more than $2 billion, that means people are pricing in the assets Massive declines. And remember what those assets are. They're CBS, they're Paramount, they're the library. I mean, this is an industry that you're, that, you know, you're asking for money that might not even be there. Well, first of all, it's there because we got there what now. will long be remembered as a billion-dollar deal, but um, which has broken all records. Okay, putting that aside, nobody has a crystal ball. I don't think that entertainment is going to go away. No, you're just going to um, get in commoditized, uh, in commoditized venues that will cost less money and make less money for the movie theaters. And, you know, people aren't paying for stuff. I mean, this is... This is happening right now. It's and, not a crystal And ball. also AI, Fran. Uh, yeah. One of the things that you got uh, regarding AI was that actors would get paid for their image and likeness. Uh, the question with AI becomes, do, does anybody really know how to protect uh, actors from a force that, that hasn't even begun to rear the rest of its body? I mean, the head has ticked up, but this thing is growing very fast. That's true. And it's, it's driven by human beings who are short-sighted, not long-sighted, and have a complete disregard for the fact that the more humans that we put out of work, the more we move towards a dystopia. But having said that, I think that mm. we put language in that they agreed to, that we are going to meet twice a year to keep our thumb on the pulse of what is happening, there is going to be a point when we have to lock elbows and go to Washington to protect the industry at large from piracy. So, you know, there's a, a lot of meat on the bone in terms of all of the things that will need to constantly be addressed. And first and foremost, it's a recognition okay. that we as an industry have to remain okay. responsible Fran, for the uh, decisions we got that are made. We got a commercial break coming up hard. Thank you so much for coming on. 